Hey folks, so tonight I've got a video that I've been wanting to make for a very long time. So you'll probably remember back a while ago, I bought these steppers and drivers from uh, omcstepperonline.com. Um, I got the link in the description. But the cool thing is they're closed loop and I've crashed this little mini mill before with open loop steppers. And all they kind of do is make a little popping noise and they miss steps. So this one, if you remember back, and insert cool footage here of me fighting the stepper motors, these steppers know that they're off and they try to compensate for it. So tonight what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and try and crash this thing. So I'm just gonna manually just jog it um, past its limit. And I'm expecting it to fight back a little bit and I'm hoping that it doesn't fight back too hard and it should throw a code. So that's what should happen. So tonight, we're gonna go ahead and intentionally crash the mini mill. So here she is, I cleaned her up a little bit today. Um, I went ahead and, and lubed up at least the Y axis. Um, I'm being kind of lazy tonight, but that's what I'm planning on crashing is the Y. I figure it's the most sturdy and rigid, and it's also got the shortest amount of travel. And so I think as far as ball screw deflection and, and actually damaging things, I've got the least chance of hurting anything by, by picking on the Y axis. Another thing is that I've got my computer plugged in to a separate power outlet than the rest of all my electronics. That way I figure if something actually does go wrong with this, I can you know, quickly just flip the power supply off. Everything on the mill will die but the computer will stay on and I won't damage anything in the software. So that is the plan right now. So right here is my three drivers. You can see three green lights. Um, whichever one fails, which I believe the Y is gonna be in the middle, no matter how I did it. I know I did X, Y, or Z, or Z, Y, X. Um, so that one in the middle, the green light should go out and Oh, I should have looked before. I think that red light's gonna flash five times, but I'm not 100% sure. It's gonna light up. Um, and that's assuming everything goes as it should. All right, let's make this happen. So I'm just gonna jog it. I'm just gonna let the front, I'm just gonna jog it and let it hit the front and see what happens. I haven't homed it or done anything, but it shouldn't matter for this test. See, it's fighting it, okay. It fought it, it kind of made some, some noises that it didn't like, and within, I don't know, half a second, it stopped fighting it. Now this axis is dead, not doing anything when I push the keys. And if you look up at the driver, that red light's blinking. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven blinks, not five. So that tells me that there's a positioning error and the positioning error is that it was fighting this guy over here. Um, so yeah, that driver is dead. This stepper, I believe it officially like kills power to it. Uh, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure. So the only way to fix that at this point is to cycle power to that driver. Um, I don't have all this stuff on their own switches or anything, so the easiest thing for me to do is just to cycle power of the CNC electronics, so it'll be everything but the CPU. So we'll go ahead and do that and get this back online. Power cycle, everything's green. There we go. Drive it away from the end and make sure that you don't go the wrong direction and cause it to go into another error. So that's actually pretty cool. That worked as planned, which sometimes doesn't quite happen. So Linux CNC is totally oblivious to what just happened. Um, I wasn't specifically watching on my screen when it happened, but I would almost guarantee that even after this driver has a fault, if I continue to push the button to jog the machine, it's gonna continue to, to move. It's, it thinks it's moving. The reason why is that it's a closed loop system, but it's not closed loop to Linux CNC. The loop is closed to the driver. So you've got Linux CNC that's pushing a signal, it's saying, hey, move this this far. It pushes that to the driver, the driver pushes it out to the motor. Motor 
does whatever it thinks it's supposed to do, and it sends a signal back through the encoder to the driver, and the driver compares the two. I told you to go this far, you actually went this far, it's close enough, we're good, or it's far enough off, we're bad, kill the, kill the motor. Now, when that signal to kill the motor happens, Linux still doesn't know about it. So here's the cool part of these drivers. Up here you've got pulse, direction, enable, and then the bottom pair is alarm, plus and minus. I was looking on their sheet and what it looks like is that is basically a switch. And I'm going to go inside and show you how that's wired up, but pretty much the idea is that you can feed that some power off of your breakout board and um, it almost acts as a limit switch. It would be the same, same wiring configuration as a limit switch and it would feed back to your breakout board, which would then feed back into your CPU and Linux CNC would then know that there was an error and kill your spindle and the other two axes. So that would be pretty cool. So this is the schematic of the driver um, and the breakout board. So, and this was provided by steparoundline.com. What they've got is the alarm plus and alarm minus right here. Those are the pins I was just showing you. And they've got an opto coupler right here. So, if this is closed, this is connected to ground on your breakout board, so this whole line would basically be ground. Your fault would be low. When it, if this was open, no current would flow. You've got five volts coming through, and this is a pull-up resistor, um, so this would be high. You'd have five volts here, very little current, which means very little voltage drop. So you'd still have almost five volts here, and this would be a high. Um, but, like I said, the minute that this closes, this grounds out this entire row and this would go low. So right here it says in default the resistance between alarm plus and alarm minus is low impedance in normal operation and become high when the drive goes into an error. So high impedance to me, I mean high level, that, that means resistance, right? So low resistance to me means that the switch is closed normally. It's a normally closed switch. Um, and then it becomes high impedance when it's an error. So it opens when there's an error. High impedance, high resistance, that means it's an open circuit. It all kind of means the same thing to me. I'm sure there's little technical differences, but that's what I get out of that. So, so basically it's a normally closed switch. That's what we want to know out of this diagram. So right here, this is the lint this is the Linux CNC um, documents. I actually was already running limit switches at one point in time and I made a little harness and I used 10k resistors and didn't have any issues so that's what I'm going to go ahead and use tonight. But the idea is that I will run um, from the 5 volts on my breakout board through a pull up resistor and directly into the input and then I will tee off of that same one, so I'll just end up plugging two wires into the, the one input on the breakout board, and I'll run it over to that switch, and then it will ground out through the breakout board. So let's do it. All right, so I went ahead and made some changes. Let me show you what I did in Linux. Sorry, no screen capture in Linux. You get what you get with me. Um, so we are in the step config wizard, Shaky camera, hold on, let me get to the right thing. Let me, let me actually back out the whole thing. Discarded the changes, all right. Step config wizard, right? Modify an existing one, my mill four. All right, don't care about that. Now, here we go, the parallel port, and it's actually right where I have my mouse. I went ahead and selected minimum limit Y, and then I inverted it by checking that checkbox. And so now pin 10 right there is an input, and it's expecting um, any type of my errors will go through that pin. So then you go forward, you run through them all, you know, done. Yes. All right, so let's go ahead and fire up Linux. And then 
over here, what I did, I've got my, this is all unplugged, so I'm not gonna electrocute myself. I've got power right here, and inside here is actually 10K resistors. I had three of them um, because I was running them for all three axes before. So I snipped off the two ends so they can't really touch anything, and I let the last end go into pin 10. And then I also teed off of that same pin with this wire and ran it into my alarm positive for the Y axis. And then ground just below it, it's also green to confuse everybody, went over to ground on my breakout board. So that's pretty much what the diagram had. Uh, let's go ahead and give this thing power and see if it trips an error right away. So in case that wasn't very clear, now, instead of just before where the stepper motor should be um, talking to the driver, now the driver is talking to the breakout board, which is talking to Linux. So when I go to crash this sucker, it should trigger an error in Linux. So let's see what happens. Oh, it struggled that time a lot. <laughs> okay, once again, we've got our flashing positional error on the Y axis, but check this out. Over here, we have an error. Port one on limit switch error. Oh, I can't read through my thing. Joint one on limit switch error. So it actually gave us a limit switch error. So this is kind of silly, but I run my um, PWM to analog voltage converter for my spindle that I designed and they're for sale on rivalmachine.com. Um, I actually sold out a power supply. So right now I do not have a power supply to turn this spindle on. But what I think I'm gonna do is just in the M code, go ahead and turn the spindle on and see, cause it'll show it in Linux CNC, it'll think it's on. And then try and crash this thing, clear this code, try and crash it and see what it does. It should, I think, turn that spindle off. So let's try that. Okay, I cleared the errors. So now I'm all green on my drivers. Uh, I've kind of moved the table back to center kinda. And I went ahead and um, cleared out the error on the, that was on the bottom right. And on the top right, you can see I've got my spindle set to 1700 RPM. So if the computer, the computer doesn't know any better, it thinks it's you know, manually running that spindle. So now let's see what happens when it, when it doesn't like it. Should we go fast? Let's crash this thing. So this is shifts, so this is rapid. Eh, not very eventful. All right, this is cool. Boom, driver sends the error, shuts it down. Boom, joint one limit switch error. Look at that, spindle zero. So that folks is pretty darn cool. Um, I fought this mill, like I had enough nerve to think I could actually make parts for people on this and, and start a business with it. And I spent a week probably sitting there watching this thing cut with my finger on the escape key because it was missing steps in the Z axis, which is the worst <laughs> because it would try to go up and then it would, so it would think it went up, it would go bzzz, miss some steps and not really go up and then it would plunge right back down and it would plunge right into the material. Um, luckily never into the table, but it was destroying itself. And so I couldn't, I couldn't even step away for more than a few seconds without, you know, almost having a heart attack. And here we are where this thing, if it misses anything more than a few steps, which I think it's about 180 degrees on the motor, and when you think it takes, what is it, 20 to 1, 20 rotations? I forget. I'm making things up now. But it's a lot. So the positional error, it, it doesn't take much on this to trigger that error. Uh, it's enough to where you could probably sleep easy at night or at least be on the other side of the wall and not be freaking out that your machine is killing itself and not telling you. So it will shut down all your axes, your spindle, everything, if it senses that positional error just with the feedback there. And you can make that happen on all three axes uh, and you can actually run limit switches in there as well, all fed into the same, the same input pin. So that's cool. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, first time back with the mini mill in, oh my gosh, six months now. So it's fun, it's been something that I have wanted to do for a long time. I have had the idea to actually test these things and 
you never intentionally crash a mill, right? So I can finally say I've intentionally crashed this mill. Um, might have been a little underwhelming, I'll admit that, but it was fun and it was cool. Um, if you are looking for the closed loop stepper motors, I've been happy with, um, it's omc-stepperonline.com. Disclaimer, I am an affiliate with them, so they give me a, a, a little bit of a percentage back uh, on anything that, that comes from the links in the description, but it just helps support the channel and I wouldn't be pushing their product if I didn't think it was really cool. So uh, that's it for this week. Have a good one.